So let's go ahead and write the solution in integral notation and graph them on a number line. So I have x minus 7 is less than negative 12. I'm going to go ahead and add 7 to both sides. So I get x is less than negative 5. So this is kind of a, this is a blank number line. So I'll pick here to be 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. And I tend to give you on exams um, and quizzes blank number lines, so label them yourself. So I have x is less than negative 5. So negative 5 is not included. That means I can represent it with an open dot. And then I could pick a text point. So if x is less than negative 5, am I shading to the left or to the right? Well, let's pick a test point. Is negative 4 less than five, negative 5? No, but negative 6 is. I'm going to shade to the left. When we write an interval notation, we read our graph from left to right. So over here is negative infinity. So an in interval notation, I would have from negative infinity to negative 5. And then because negative 5 is not included in my solution, it gets a parenthesis. Next, I have negative 4x is greater than or equal to 28. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 4. Because I'm dividing by a negative, I flip the sign. 28 divided by negative 4 is negative 7. So I've got negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5. You don't have to solve the whole thing. Is negative 7 included in my solution set? Yes, x is less than or equal to negative 7. And because it's less than, I'm also going to be shading to the left. So this would be the interval from negative infinity to negative 7. All right, for this next example, I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So I've got negative 3x minus 12 plus 2 is greater than or equal to 7 minus x. So that gives me negative 3x minus 10 is greater than or equal to 7 minus x. I add 3x to both sides. I subtract 7. I get negative 17 is greater than or equal to 2x. I divide both sides by 2. I get negative 17 halves, or that would be like, that would be um, negative 8 and a half is greater than or equal to x. So here I've got negative 9, negative 8, negative 7. I have x is greater than or equal to negative 8 halves. Well, negative 8 halves is included in my solution, right? Here's negative 17 halves, or negative 8 halves, 8 and a half. And I would shade my solution, everything to the right, because it's x is, oh, it's x is less than? I read that wrong. Sorry, everybody. Let me write this more clearly. I wasn't very creative with my answers, was I? So here I have x is negative uh, 17 halves is greater than or equal to x. So if it's greater than or equal to x, remember I could rewrite this as x is less than or equal to negative 17 halves. So again, I shade to the left. I've got to come up with better examples next time. So I've got negative infinity to negative 17 halves. I can also have compounding inequalities. That would be these, right? Where I've got uh, kind of a three-parter. What we do is we treat it the same, but what I do to the middle, I do the left and the right. So here I have three is less than x plus two, which is less than eight. I subtract two from the middle, the left, right. So I get one is less than x, which is less than six. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 1 is not included in my solution because 1 is less than x. 6 is not included in my solution because x is less than 6. My solution is every single number between 1 and 6. So in interval notation, this would be parenthesis, 1, comma, 6, parenthesis. Let's try this again. I'm going to go ahead and add 1 to both sides. That gives me negative 1 is less than or equal to negative 3x, which is less than or equal to 6. I'm going to divide by negative 3. Remember when I divide by negative, I flip the sign. So I have 1 third is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than or equal to negative 2. And we can think about this logically. Like, this wouldn't have made sense if I said negative 2 was greater than 1 third if we hadn't flipped our signs. 
So let's rewrite this. I've got negative 2 is less or equal to x, which is less or equal to 1 third. So here I've got negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. So I've got 1 third, which is included. I've got negative 2, which is included. So my solution set for x would be every number between 2 and 1 third. That would be bracket 2, negative 2, comma, 1 third bracket. And again, we're reading from left to right. Lastly, I'd like to discuss inequalities with unusual solution sets. So when we were working with equations, we, uh, linear equations, we found linear equations with no solutions, which were called contradictions, or infinitely many solutions, which were called identities. This is also true for inequalities. So I've got, for example, I have x is greater than x plus 1. Can x ever be greater than x plus 1? No, if I have x, let's switch to a brighter color. x is greater than x plus 1, and I subtract x from both sides, I get 0 is greater than 1. This is a false statement. So there's going to be no solutions. But that's also because no number is greater than itself plus a constant, so plus 1. In the second example, I have 3 um, times x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1 plus x. And this has infinitely many solutions. Let's see why. So if I go ahead and distribute, I've got 3x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 2x plus x, which is 3x plus 1. If I subtract 3x, I have 3 is greater than or equal to 1. And this is true. This is always true. So for any value of x, this will be a true inequality. So this set has infinitely many solutions. It's every point on the number line, which can be denoted from negative infinity to infinity, or x such that x is a real number, if you wanted to write that in set builder notation. Let's look at a couple more examples and determine their solution sets. So if I have 6x is greater than 2x plus 6, that means 6x, switching again to a darker color, 6x is greater than 6x plus 6. That means 0 is greater than 6, which is false. This has no solutions, or you can write the empty set symbol. It's up to you. For this next example, I have 2x plus 5 is less than negative 2x minus 4. I add 2x to both sides. I have 5 is less than negative 4, which is also false, so no solutions.